Tom here from Lawrence Systems. It is August of 2022 and TrueNAS Core 13U2 has been released. So has TrueNAS Scale 22.02.3. The dev teams at TrueNAS have been quite busy. This is a lot maintaining two of these, but they seem to be doing a good job of it, closing bugs, adding features, keeping the roadmap going forward for both products. I know a lot of people thought with the introduction of Scale, TrueNAS Core was going away. Well, it doesn't appear to be and I didn't expect it to be. Kind of the little background on that is we are a TrueNAS reseller, an IX Systems reseller of their hardware, and that hardware comes with support contracts. So support contracts are for multiple years. That guarantees that the money that comes in these support contracts that are from selling your hardware that goes into the development of the free and open source TrueNAS product line will be updated both for core and scale. That's kind of the business model and how all this works. Don't worry, you don't have to buy a system for either one of these, there's no license fees. This is still open source and free, which was also a concern when people seen some of the name changes. That being said, we're gonna talk about some of the changes in TrueNAS Core 13 and TrueNAS Scale 22.02.3. But before we dive into the details of the video, let's first. Are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering, storage, or virtualization project? Is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. All right, we're going to start with the TrueNAS Scale 22.02.3 release. There's a lot of changes, but first, I think something that I want to remind people of, Scale is developed as an appliance that uses specific Linux packages with each release. Attempting to update Scale with apt or other methods other than Scale web interface can result in a non-functional system. I can completely attest to that as someone who was curious what would happen and ended up with a non-functional system. On that note, I do not have a TrueNAS scale system updated to this version because playing around with some of the things in TrueNAS scale, I was able to break a few things. So I have to reload that particular system, but I'm going to do a upcoming video kind of getting started with TrueNAS scale because it's gotten a lot better than it was when I first initially played with it. Performance issues aside, the ability to have such a large catalog of apps is actually really cool and, you know, popular use case for this. So I'll be diving into that in the future. But for now, the list here, though, of improvements, there's a handful of little things, but they're not groundbreaking. They did not address yet that I can tell any of the performance issues I had brought up previously with it. But the performance issues may not be that big of a deal to you and your use case, especially if you're just looking at a lot of the app usage on there. When it comes to the bug list, though, wow, there is just a lot. Now, one particular thing in this list is this right here. Snapshots not deleted after specified lifetime expires. There are conditions that will cause this. I've had a few people comment on this. It doesn't seem to do it from a fresh load, but if there's certain conditions met and they're noted in the bug there, that will cause the system to fill up. And I had a few people, I think it was a couple forum posts I had seen and people uh, tagging me that said this was one of the problems where it will just kind of keep running away with the snapshots and not properly deleting them. But that has been fixed. That's one of them that stood out, but there's a lot of other little details in here that are, well, quite important. So they spent a lot of time basically debugging this version. So I'm ready to start with it again. I'm going to reload the system that I broke before. I kind of just have it set aside, but I'll be doing it, like I said, a deeper dive on that soon. Now for TrueNAS Core 13U2. Now this is their software release cycle. And I want to point out U1 was suitable for business use, release, general use, just when it hits this right here and says release, but U2 plus essentially we're at U2 and all the updates beyond larger systems suitable for higher uptime deployments. And they have some of the release schedules. Obviously the next one's going to be U3. I have been testing this internally. I updated some of our systems. Well, it just came out today, August 30th of 2022. So the testing I've done so far has been limited, but has gone well. Now, one thing to note here, is this right here. Due to a bug upstream network driver causing data corruption with iSCSI sharing, two and a half gig real card NICs are unsupported in 13U2. Now I think this is an important thing. 
FreeBSD and Realtek have not always been the best of friends. I generally try to avoid both Broadcom and Realtek cards when I'm doing builds. They just seem to be problematic. The Intel and Mellanox cards I've just had, well, way better luck with, I guess you could say, because it is certainly unlucky having a two and a half gig card that you're hoping to handle iSCSI cause iSCSI corruption. Not the biggest fan of two and a half gig for the price. The 10 gigs aren't substantially more, but you, you got to do what you got to do with the devices you have. But I would just go 10 gig if I was going to set up iSCSI anyways. And I generally, as I said, avoid real tech. And that goes the same for PFSense being built on BSD as well. There are some over the years bugs that have come up in some of the real tech drivers with BSD, nature of things. Scale being on Linux, probably has better driver support for it. I didn't see any particular notes about real tech cards in there. Coming down here to what did they change? Well, the one thing about TrueNAS Core is it's very stable. It is very business oriented in terms of just being a dedicated storage server. So there's not a major amount of improvements on here. These are all small incremental improvements, which is what people want in their storage target when they're using it for, let's say, a hypervisor or some intense database sharing application where you're just using it for storage, not loading applications. So there's not a lot of changes that come in here, but they did do some updates to the community plugins uh, to get them to the latest version. So they're pulling off of BSD 13. There's a lot of little bugs that are in here. Obviously, the big scary one, if you're using Realtek, would be iSCSI data corruption with Realtek. So there's clearly a condition there that is uh, very problematic. But everything else in here, pretty straightforward. Just a lot of little things to be fixed in here. Now, the one thing that is also in here is an update to NextCloud. NextCloud is probably one of the better applications that do still have good support in running it inside of IO Cage. But I did notice this in the notes. NetCloud issue could not be reproduced. Recommend users migrating to scale, which provides a better experience when running applications. I thought it was interesting that they put that in here. And it's kind of signaling that there's not the best maintenance on some of the IO cage packages. So that is something to keep into consideration. As I said at the beginning, TrueNAS Scale is going to be way more application centric and better supported. And to see this kind of officially in a documentation. If you're looking for a better experience because you're having some of the problems on there, then yes, you may want to look at using scale. Now, seeing that did not stop me from, well, being curious and seeing if it would install. So here is my TrueNash 13 U2. We're going to go over here to the plugins. And I have a NextCloud instance that I set up just today, just built this, got it configured, and it works perfectly fine. Well, works perfectly fine unless your goal is to use the NextCloud Office combined with the Collabra Online built-in code server. This is designed only to work in a Linux environment and not a BSD jail. So while NextCloud does work and install, there is at least this particular feature, maybe others, but this one I know is a popular one that will not work if you use this on TrueNAS Core. And of course, this brings us back to the question of which platform do you go with, TrueNAS Scale or TrueNAS Core? TrueNAS Scale, way better application support, more diverse application support, more up-to-date applications. TrueNAS Core, well, it's the dependable BSD system that I use for a lot of enterprise storage solutions that just don't need applications. This is a storage target device, such as a target for your virtualization, a target for a NAS where you have many people sharing files off of it, but no other applications directly running on it. So ultimately those are, you know, the divergence we're gonna see in these two different products where one is really focused on that storage performance and that's your core and it's been around for a while, but hey, I'm all for TrueNAS scale and the application support because there's a lot of efficiency to be gained by having, well, everything run as close to your storage as possible. So as that platform progresses and TrueNAS scale gets it to be a more mature product, it can be a good choice to, you know, consolidate everything and have all those fancy Docker things running on that. Links to the different notes that I talked about down below, links to my tutorials on TrueNAS and permissions and all the other questions that people frequently ask. Looking forward to reading some comments, some thoughts you may have on these topics, or head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion. Thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. 
And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.